So how do you know if you're too close to the vehicles behind and in front? You could use some reference points, but that will depend on a lot of things. It'll depend on your height, the size of your vehicle, the size of both the vehicle behind you and in front, and so on. For example, if the vehicle behind you is taller, like a pickup truck, you might see their front lights align with the bottom of your back window when you're at the right distance. If the vehicle is more or less the same size and shape as yours, that might be the bottom of its windshield. If it's a lower vehicle with a pointier nose, like a sports car, that might be the middle of its windshield, and so on. Same goes for the vehicle in front. So the most important thing here is to move very slowly and reverse and advance less. I'm driving a manual transmission car right now, so I always keep the clutch depressed in the friction zone in order to control my speed better and so that I can brake at any time. And that's because the speed I'm going at right now is way too slow to release the clutch pedal completely without stalling the car. With an automatic transmission, I control my speed only by releasing the pressure on the brake pedal. I'm always pressing it, but I apply less pressure if I want to move faster, or should I say in this case, less slowly. That's assuming I'm parking on a more or less flat surface. Now some people recommend turning the wheel completely to the right in the first step, right before reversing. The reason why I don't prefer that method is because in the next step, after we've turned our wheel completely to the left and reverse, we can get too close or even hit the car in front. By turning it one and a quarter turn, there's less the risk of that happening. You might still get close depending on the situation, so be careful. There are other methods where you align yourself differently and turning the steering wheel all the way might be okay, but I prefer this method. That's the reason why in my other parallel parking videos, I recommend turning the steering wheel only one turn to the right if there's plenty of room. In that case, if we aligned ourselves properly at the beginning, we won't hit the car in front. But when parking in a tighter spot, since we'll need to be at a sharper angle, we'll need to turn the wheel more. With all types of parkings where you use reference points, those reference points will vary according to different factors. They're a starting point. For example, I align my window's right edge with the middle of the license plate of the car in front, or its rear wheel in the middle of the window. If the car in front of you is wider, those reference points will be a bit more to the left of your window. In the second step, I reversed until I saw the light of the car behind in my mirror like this. But if you're parking in front of a wider vehicle, you'll see its light more towards the left of your mirror. Practice and adjust accordingly to find reference points that work for you and your vehicle. I'll do a video specifically on parking between vehicles of different lengths and widths and explaining what determines the distance from the curb since that seems to be a problem for many people. Also, always try to keep your head more or less in the same position when adjusting to those reference points. So again, the two most important things when parking in a tight spot like this are 1. Move very slowly when both reversing and advancing and 2. Advance and reverse less distance if you're not sure if you're too close and repeat the steps of alternating between turning the wheel all the way to one side and the other more often. It might take more steps, but it's safer. Now I can already see the comments on dry steering coming. Most modern vehicles are built strong enough so that dry steering isn't really an issue, as long as you don't abuse it of course. You shouldn't do it if you don't need to, but in any situation where you have very little room to maneuver, especially with a manual transmission vehicle, it becomes very difficult to do it without dry steering, especially for a beginner. Is it allowed at the exam? Well, that might depend on where you do it, but as far as I know, in most places, the exam focuses on safety and dry steering doesn't have anything to do with safety. So inform yourself in a local driving school or your department of vehicles to be sure. Now here's a solution some people have to parking in tight spaces. Is this legal? It's actually not very clear. So use at your own risk. But it makes for nice pictures though. Now on a funny note, I've heard that in some places where there's very little room to park, People are expected to leave their car in neutral and not engage the handbrake when they park on a flat surface so that people that are parking can push the car with their bumpers to make room. I don't know if it's true or just an urban legend, so if it's true and you happen to live in a place where people do that, let us know in the comments. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching.